Hello, folks. Almost there, almost there. Give me a move. Right. Alrighty. Ah, hello, everybody. Yep, no, just yep, don't have that enthusiasm. Can't do it, can't fake it. Gotta have it or you don't. And today we don't. That's okay. We are enthusiastic today, but for not so much for pretending to be all jovial on uh, live chat for YouTube. Nothing like that. God no. Alright, let me just. I've got to just get the back panel off this 1466 that we're about to work on. Because it contains sensitive information on the back, and I don't want people squawking at me saying that I ruined somebody's life because I doxed them. Yeah, Terry Taylor, Travis, AJ, Martin, Blue, Don, Blue Dog Ron. Hey, that, that is a hard name to say in a hurry. Michael Kosh, Hectic. Let's see, Byron's here. Ed's here. Yeah, Keith and Crazy J and Barry. Oh, happy birthday, Travis. Alright, that's that's about the extent of the celebratory activity I have. I've already had to um, s say happy birthday or happy solar trip, happy solar lap to someone else today. Okay, we're done, we're done, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Okay. Okie dokie. Ah. Hello, Alessandro, I think it is, from Brazil. Welcome. Hey, Sinclair. Okay, let's go overhead. Alright, so we've got a 1466. Might have a blown PCH, I don't know. Seems to respond to SMC reset mode, but that's about it, and showing no CPU activity. Which is why I'm worried it's going to be the PCH. Haircut, pff, yeah. It, my hair is kind of going through a bit of a funny phase. It's realized it's been released from the bonds of gravity and tension and um, now it's just deciding to run free and do whatever the hell it wants it just like goes out like some sort of deranged professor's hair dude not exactly my ideal look certainly not going to get any um, women with this but um, thankfully I'm married so that's a plus for me but yeah when you when my hair gets cut from the long ponytail, then it just goes a little crazy. Kind of like the cables on the um, that great big radio telescope that keep breaking at the moment. Okay, where is my marking pen? Hmm. Don't have my preferred one, so we'll have to use this one. Three, five, three. Get this SSD out. It could be that something's also just shorting one of the lines, but uh, I have a bad feeling it's probably going to be PCH. Right, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Keith McDermott, on the loan situation. Basically, I received a call this morning that um, we have got conditional approval of the home loan for the amount that we asked. And now we start the fun and games process of all the legal paperwork. That in itself is actually quite expensive. Um, it's not a huge amount compared to the overall loan, but it is still, it's a fair chunk of change. Put it this way, I could have bought myself a M1 MacBook Air with eight gigabytes and eight cores with the amount of money. And this is a 165 board, by the way. Anyway, um, I will reserve self-congratulations until we actually do sign the deeds over and that I will then consider to be really the moment when it uh, when I've finally got to where I need to get to. Hello Demaris by the way. And Harry. Ah, oh, Pernov's here. Hello Pernov. Now let's see. I've just got to update the job card on this. So 353 did I? 
three six. No, I've got the wrong one on there. Okay. Three five three. Beautiful. So let's add a note. Right, eight two zero one six five. Let's try that again. Should now at least give us the board. Yep, it does. Excellent. Ah, the carpet python will not be following, uh, joining us tonight. We don't get too many of them, but yeah, they do occasionally pass through the area. Alright, let's see what our current is going to be on this. So apparently the people who tested this say that there's no chipmunk activity. I give out the chipmunks to some of my larger, in terms of quantity, business to business clients. Because it helps me... It helps them uh, sort out which ones they should and should not be sending to me helps. Okay, normal there. Do not stop and start spinning it. If it stops and starts again, that'll be a very bad sign. You definitely don't have CPU activity. So it could be being held in a reset state at this point. It looks like there's a little bit of grime there. It's definitely not blinking. So I'm going to disconnect the keyboard and see if that improves anything. Uh, Corey, yeah, I mean, it depends what hype you're talking about. I mean, I believe it will edit, you know, HEVC 10-bit and all that sort of stuff just fine. But I think when you step outside of the defined environment or containment of performance, then it's going to crash pretty hard. Well, when I say hard, I mean, it's going to be like most reasonable ARM systems. I'm not expecting miracles from it. I mean, to have 15 watts power consumption and then to try and claim that it's faster than an i9, yeah, it's, that's a pretty extraordinary claim. I would say at this point it probably does well in some areas, but it's certainly not going to immediately displace even, I would say even an i3 or an i5 would easily keep up with it or beat it yeah but I think like with iPhones if you use it for what it was designed for then you're gonna be just fine it's gonna be great so you're not gonna you know feel like you've been cheated or anything like that but as I've said quite a few times prior since this thing has come about when uh, what was I say the good performance it gives you while in that constrained area of use does not imply that it's going to beat the pants off everything else outside of that use. But compared to an i3 laptop for 150, that's a bit uh, that's a bit brutal. Oh, Jose, it's all good. We're just getting started. I think I'll just take this out and have a look, and see if I can spot anything. So it doesn't seem to be keyboard causing it. I'm almost tempted to take this, the uh, heatsink off straight away and look for that much unwanted crack on the PCH. And I see there's claims now that the Rosetta converted versions are faster than the originals. And I remember seeing similar claims in the past when they did the conversion from PowerPC to Intel. And I th once again, I think it's a very going to be, they found something that they can do that is faster. But for the majority of cases, I don't think that's going to play out. Hey, Andrew Hughes. Expected better than i7U, i7 what? Um, which which i7? You talking about 10th gen or 9th gen? Mm. 
the one good thing about the current sort of computing environment that we work in is that a great majority of what we do is online. You know, we have sort of narrowed down um, a great portion of how we do things. So it does make it easier to optimize the system to give you a good user experience. See, Tim's. I missed Tim's stream because I was busy fighting with an iPhone. Um, Jim did. Jim. 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 Jim did notify me, and I uh, unfortunately was busy. Okay, I just need to message Jim. Streaming. Poor guy is probably tired and wanting to get some sleep, and now I'm harassing him. Anyway, I'll probably end up, once I'm a little bit richer again, I'll probably get a couple of the M1 machines, see what they're like. Yeah. Because like I said, I think they'll be good machines for, like when I settle down for the night, and I just want to relax, watch some Netflix or something like that, just lying in bed. It's the perfect sort of thing. I mean, right now I use a 1502 which in itself is a bit of an overkill. A 1466 probably would be fine. The only reason I use the 1502 is because, of course, it's got the retina screen, whereas the 1466 has the not-so-retina screen. Hang on, Warren, it'll be interesting to see. I'll be interested to see what the compiling performance is like. Stuff like that. Stuff that's not something that they've engineered explicitly for. Okay, I can see corrosion on the board already, so thank God for that. Yeah, Corey, they will, you're gonna, sounds like you're going to be using it for pretty much what I'm thinking of doing as well. So where's that corrosion? I know I saw it. I know I saw it. There we go. Oh yeah, that'll stop it. That'll stop it dead. Yeah, thank God for corrosion. If there wasn't any corrosion, I would definitely be looking at the PCH. Yeah, that's the other thing is that we, as I was saying before, we have gotten to the point now in computing where you don't need that much performance. The performance requirements for most people to maintain connectivity in a way that they're happy with has pretty much plateaued out. We simply... Yeah, unless they bring out some new extra high efficiency encoding scheme and you need a new decoder, um, that's about the only time you're going to start running into slowness. But we're also at the point where the video codecs, sorry, <coughs> pardon me, where the video codecs have sort of gotten to the point where we're happy with them. And I don't see any major overhaul in that happening in the next 10 years. So, yeah, we, we really are at a case of like with most cars now. It's like the cars go fast enough, they're roomy enough, they're efficient enough, well, relatively speaking. They're, they're all good enough. So you don't really find yourself having to think too hard about which one am I going to select to make sure I get the best return on the dollar for the, my future, you know, if I invest now. It's a bit like, you know, early 2000s or even the 1990s when you were buying computers, you had to really like weigh up your uh, choices and work out what's going to become old straight away as soon as you open the box and things like that. Whereas now, I mean, look at this, we're, we're fixing nine, ten-year-old MacBooks and they're still entirely good to use. So we've long since gone past the point of needing extra performance in machines other than for doing things like video editing and uh, for some particular cases people doing you know hard math or something like that or computations but for the most of us what is in an iPhone is more than ample I mean even for me when I'm just consuming media or whatever it's fine I think the biggest thing that I'm curious to see is what is the real 
efficiency per transaction compared to, say, the X86 offerings that we have right now. Because certainly on the low end of the scale, the ARMs do well overall efficiency because they don't tend to have a high, um, high overhead. Let's just keep it simple, say high overhead or quiescent requirements, whereas the X86s do. So most of the ARMs that we've been using would run on the idle current of what generally were the X86 systems. So I'm kind of curious when you eliminate those that factor and compare the actual transactional cost in terms of power, how it compares now. Because I really don't think that Apple has sort of gone along and made something that has um, is more efficient by magnitude, which is what they're trying to pitch at the moment. You know, they're saying, look, our 15-watt CPU is beating the pants off a 200 or 150-watt CPU. And I think that's a little bit of a little bit of a stretch. So I'm, that's what I'm wanting to see what really comes out. All right. And if people are wondering what is wrong, why I'm saying that this particular spot of corrosion would be the killer, uh, I'll bring it up on the board view schematic, and we'll have a look and show. Show and tell, as it were, with my stupid professor hairdo. <sighs> okay, show and tell time. Here we go. I'm pretty sure that's, yep, that's the one I want. U1950. Okay, so basically U1950, it's a PCH power okay line. And so when that's all corroded and nasty, we're not going to get our PCH power okay. And everything else is going to come up, but that's not. Because as you can see, it's actually fed in with all sys power good. So you would some, you may initially think, you know, when you get all sys power good, then you should be all ready to go. But as you can see, we don't get our PCH sys power good um, out of that. So we still need to generate that one. So because we've lost that, that's why it seems like it's coming on pole good, but it's not really actually booting. That's the theory. <laughs> the reality may be different. Let's hope it's not. But that's the theory. Likewise, we would have had perhaps something similar if some of the Ulsys power good chip had been damaged. But in this case, it's that one there. Where is it? This one here is also another favorite. In fact, that is also corroded. So that actually may be more of a culprit than this one. This is the um, uh, 1VO5 chip, and that is actually quite corroded under there, so we'll have to replace that too. Replacing this little itty-bitty chip that doesn't seem like it's much is when I realize that I really need to get myself a quick... 861DW workstation, ah, uh, hot air station. Ni hao, Stamal, 81, ni hao ma. Because when you try to get this itty bitty chip off with something like one of those um, in the handle hot air machines or even the old Tenma that I used to have, you'd have to crank it up at full speed, full temperature, and you'd only just barely get this damn thing off. And I just realized I've got my damn iPhone nozzle on this one. It's a travesty. This is why I need a second one. I need one for iPhones and one for MacBooks. Because I hate having to change these nozzles. Yeah, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what any of us really think. The proof's going to be in the pudding, as they say, and when people get their hands on these machines and start using them for everyday use. So like I said, I think for most people, it's going to be great. Basically, it's a nice laptop profile, high-performance iPad. But I don't think it's going to be the great unseater, as it were.
Certainly having the hardware acceleration on there for the graphics, pro uh, for the uh, video processing. Yeah, that's, that's a smart move. I know I would love to have something like that on a PC, but of course we just have graphics cards that we install instead at considerable expense. Yeah, I just don't don't tell me that. Yeah, <laughs> I worry about that. To be fair, my greater worry is that board views and schematics will cease coming out from the department that we're currently getting them, and they will start coming out through the iPhone department, which means we will not get access to them. But the likes of ZXW and Wuxing or whatever the various places are, they will get them instead. And of course, you guys aren't going to care. But for me, it's going to be a money loser unless I can find some way of getting my hands on their data. Intel CPU have quick sync. Yeah. They do. And, and I guess that's sort of more how x86 you know, Intel and AMDs tend to prefer to do this sort of thing is they don't they don't do like a complete encoder or decoder, they just put in the um, extensions that can assist in it. I mean QuickSync's probably fairly close, but I do notice though that QuickSync does seem to have a quality issue at times. I don't know, is that just um, anecdotal or is that legit? I find the quality tends to be better if I work through the CPU still, but if I use QuickSync, it's not so crash hot. Oh, that is messed up. Hey, Qs. Ah, Jim, welcome. Good to see you. But it does seem to me that with Intel and AMD, they do try their best to make any extensions as generic as possible, so that they're not using up die space on something that you know, can't be used for other purposes. Whereas it would seem that Apple's decided not stuff it, we're going to support the whole thing completely. Um, no, yeah, we're, just, we're going to go with the fact that this is going to be a standard that's going to stick around. So we're going to put it in silicon and go with that. That is, that's a wee bit messed up. Definitely a bit messy there. I'm happy to actually see this machine here. I'm happy to see this sort of fault. Yeah, it is what I like to call yeah, the smoking gun type fault. You, d you found a definitive cause, or at least you sh should be. Just needs a bit of cleaning up. That trace is clean and broken through, so that's going to require a trace repair. That's fun. I don't mind doing that. It's actually kind of broken through on the other leg too. So that's good. You can feel a lot more confident when you find these kinds of faults. Oh, Jim, sorry about waking you up. There can never be... I'm never sure whether you want to be woken or not for these scenarios. 
Another one that keeps missing the streams is Zinu Yamara. I haven't seen him for a while, but he did at least leave a message the other day on the comments, so I was happy to see him. Hey, Dekasem. It's evening, actually. Middle to late evening, approaching midnight soon. Which is precisely the time that MacBook vampires like me come out. What made me... Uh, usually what it is is I just go out and I do checks sort of every half hour or... Depends on how paranoid I'm feeling. And yeah, I just go around checking things. In that particular instance though, the snake was not on the fence originally. It was actually cruising through the yard. And I saw the little blighter and I picked him up, put him on the fence. And so he could get the hell out of the yard. And taking that resistor out, that's... I do not recommend picking up snakes in, as a general rule. Being a carpet python, although they are you know, fairly placid, they will they'll put their teeth into you if they're concerned or worried. So be aware of what you are dealing with. Yeah, my field of dreams. What am I, Kevin Costner? <laughs> I guess I should simply say, don't touch snakes, don't harass them, don't do anything, just leave them alone, they'll go away. Unless it's your boss or boyfriend or something, in which case, deal with it. But certainly the easiest way to get bitten around here is to try and, well certain, first is to try and kill the snake, you will get yourself bitten, in most cases. And the other one that really does make us shake our head is we get people, there's a snake uh, identification group in, on Facebook. and. Um, we get people with photos holding the snake and the question is what snake is this and it's like why would you pick up a snake that you have you don't know what it is it is very easy on first glances to mistake a baby eastern brown with some other um, less venomous snakes but yeah you know, it's just amazing how often we get these photos in of these people like what snake's this? And it's like, what well, the heck is wrong with you? I'll be honest, most of the people holding the snakes are the bravado male types. And they're like, it's okay, babe. You know, usually probably trying to impress somebody. It's okay, I'm not afraid of snakes. Yeah. You get bitten by um, Eastern Brown, adult or baby version, then you're going to be in strife. Doesn't matter how bravado you think you are, you're going to be in strife. Yeah, some people aren't too bright, and it's unfortunate that we have a bad habit of saving them. So, who's the less bright one then? The not so bright people, or the people saving the not so bright people? I suppose we're trying to be compassionate, show our advanced humanity and stuff like that. Meanwhile, we get destroyed by it. Oh, come on. Pick up already. Thank you. Took a little longer than I liked. Yeah, seven billion people. I think we're, uh, we're causing ourselves some issues now. I do often wonder, it's not a popular viewpoint, or maybe it is, but I do often wonder if um, it wouldn't hurt to have something like a Hunger Games country. I guess maybe that's what the Middle East is sometimes these days, which is unfortunate. 
Yeah, some people are just... You wonder whether they're born for a different era or born... Yeah, they just seem out of place with society as hard as they try otherwise to adapt or fit in. So they belong back in the era of Vikings and such. I don't know, I mean, is that uh, social conditioning or is that genetics or is it both? I guess that's why people debate the hell out of that stuff. The Purge, yeah. See, the problem I have, I mean, yeah, certainly The Purge is, I enjoy watching The Purge. Uh, the problem with The Purge is the collateral damage that comes from it. And that's where I guess it'd be nice to just have an island set aside for that kind of thing. It's like, if you really, really, really want to go about life that way, or death, then we can help. Uh, this is going to be fun. There's multiple ways of doing this. I can actually turn that cap so it sits on that trace and then just rejoin the trace. That's one way of doing it. Aesthetically it's a little less good. But Practically, it's a little more useful. Because otherwise, I've got a floating endpoint on that cap. Whereas, if I just turn it around, come on, there you go, like that, then it's much easier to run the trace. It just. It's not what it was originally intended to be as, and so that kind of makes me feel a little bit blah. But then you start to say, well, is that my sense of elitism? Is that my ego driving me to do that? Why am I making things impractical for myself? Is it better to have a practical connection or a good-looking connection? <sighs> and given that Paul can barely find his wires anywhere, he'll have to be happy with any connection. And then he realizes that he's actually going to use a pulled strain from a flex somewhere. Hey, yummy steak. Blue Dog Ron. Luckily here in the state of Delaware, we only have two venomous snakes, not real common. Copperheads? Oh, and the, yeah, I know the copperheads and the timber rattler. I haven't seen any timber rattlers, but I'll probably go and look that up afterwards. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't, like, have this driving passion to handle or have snakes. You know, I'm not one of these people that drapes them over themselves and keeps them as pets or anything like that. But I do have a, a more of a respect for them. And I will fight for them to be treated appropriately. Of course, appropriate treatment depends on the person listening. Well, I mean, I agree with you on the fact that a sound connection is superior to an aesthetically pleasing connection. But, you know, that's just what I... It's one of those mental exercise things, I guess. I suppose a lot of it really is my personal... Uh, how could you say? My personal satisfaction in the job there's a certain degree of pleasure that you receive by making a nice clean good connection use them in the revival workshop services what Artin, no 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 yeah you'd actually be in a lot of strife if you got rid of snakes i'm sorry but 
snakes are actually very important, very good, and they do not cause you any grief unless you go and stick your face in their way. I know there are some tragic circumstances, but for the most part, the real problem are humans. Don't kill snakes, please. For me, from the ecology perspective, from you avoiding being bitten. As I said, most people in ER from snake bites are because they tried to kill a snake. And then of course you're going to get people who say, yeah, well that's because they were idiots. I know how to kill a snake properly. And it's like, aha. And you'll probably end up on the Darwin Awards being one of those people that tried to shoot a snake and the bullet ricochets back and pops your brains out. Oh, okay, thanks, Art. Got me in a bit of a panic there. Do Australian... Most of the time, the anti-venom is now just usually at the hospitals. So long as you can get the compression bandage done right, you should have several hours. And yeah, as long as you're immobilised, you should have several hours to get to a hospital where you can be set up right, you know, to get through the process. There is a group in Australia who have created a very nifty bandage for snake bites. And it's done in such a way that it has printed on... I'm just sort of reflowing this to make it look sweet. There we go. It has printed on the, um, on the wrap what looks like a uh, narrow aspect rectangle and what you do is um, so that you get the pressure right to immobilize or slow down the lymphatic system is um, you stretch it out till it becomes a square so when that narrow aspect rectangle becomes a square with the stretch you know you've got the right pressure or the right tension on there that's a really smart thinking i need to order a couple of those I mean, even though I am living here in Charles Towers and the hospital is like three minutes away, it's ideal if you can get those bandages on people straight away. And it should really carry one in the car, in all honesty. Oh, gross, I'm creating Hershey Kishes. Kishes? Kish, kish. Can't spell. Um, can't speak. Brain's going out of control. Hey, direct systems, good thanks. Yeah, Josh, that's that's pretty much the spelling of what I said, yeah. Hershey quiches. That would be a very unpleasant meal, I think. You may as well just call it chocolate pie if that's gonna be the case. In which case it wouldn't be so bad. All right, um, I think that's acceptably well cleaned up. I don't think there was anything else that we had to put down. We've got the cap, we've got the resistor, the chip, we've got the HSIO switch as well. I think we can chipmunk this now. Chocolate and cheese is quite possible. It depends on the cheese, of course, but yes, you are correct. Yeah, you wouldn't want some palm... Oh, palms in you actually might be able to get away with it because it's such an extreme the other way, but um, cheddar and... yeah. I guess there's people who dedicate their lives to coming up with these obscure combinations and then presenting them to people and people are like, ew, no, and then they convince them to try it. And people are shocked and they go, wow, it's a revelation. Uh, come on. Nope, not you. What about you? Yeah, you look a bit shonky. Dark chocolate and chili, yeah, that's... Well, chocolate and chili in general is very nice. 
I kind of wonder, did that trend start because, I mean, it was always around because of the um, Incans and whatnot, but did it become more widespread because of the movie Chocolat with Johnny Depp and um, that French woman, I can't remember her name. Because I did notice that after that movie was out, then all of a sudden everybody was doing cocoa and chili and cocoa nibs and all sorts of stuff, which is great, yeah. All right, so here we go. We're going to go for a chipmunk test. Green light. Current's good. 500, 600. Now we're just waiting for the green blink. Come on, give me a blink. Please. Yes. Alright, we got a green blink. We are alive and well. Thank goodness for that. Ah, oh, top left, right, yeah. What's happened there is that the windows have been obscured by the chat. Yeah, should all be good now. Hey, Sonia, welcome back. Alright, that's good. I just need to make a note on the job. Add notes. So what we do, we replaced U1950. And I need to find out what bits and pieces around U9 uh, have covered up the damn things again. Sorry folks. It's like I need a fourth screen. I don't know why, but I'm actually running a little over speed tonight in the head. You know, I'm talking too fast, things like that. Okay, let's see, all in. Okay, so we've got U1950, R1963 also had to be... We didn't replace it, we just resoldered it. Three V forty two got corroded. So no surprise. C nineteen fifty reworked and U one nine fifty trace eight rebuilt. And then U eight thousand and five replaced. Yeah. I've got to put more effort into making sure I do these notes as it happens rather than after the video. Is fourth screen an ASCII term or... Ha! Ah, fourth... No. Is it routine? Martin, it is because of the fact that this board will now have to go into ultrasonic cleaning. And so it's because the fact that I'm going to be taking the heat sink off, that of course we'll have to redo the paste. And for the paste I just use good old ordinary Arctic Silver. Um, this is premium ceramic polysynthetic thermal compound. It's not bling bling, it doesn't have the type pass sticker, it doesn't make loud noises, it doesn't go super fast in a straight line, it doesn't feature any Fast and the Furious superior car styles or anything like that. It's a boring old Camry of the thermal compound world, and I like it like that. Yeah, keeping good notes is the hardest thing. Now, when I get the new workshop, that actually is getting a little bit closer now because we have got that uh, pre-approval. When I get the better workshop, I'm going to have the computer shifted more to this side so that I can have 
Um, this area up here is the problem. It's like the keyboard's jammed in under there and I've got to overreach and that's a very awkward way of typing. And when you have small um, inhibiting things like that, it makes you disinclined to actually do the job, you know, put the data in thing. Instead you go, like, ah, I don't want to do it, it's an inconvenience. But if I rotate to the side here or maybe the other side and I can just type away without being uh, feeling like I'm overreaching or being interfered, then you're more likely to actually go ahead with doing the uh, data entry task. And that is one thing that I have to constantly, well, not that I have to constantly, it is one thing that I use a lot to determine what I need to fix up in my software, like Flexboard View or other programs. When I use it, if I find that I'm avoiding something or that I'm disinclined to take that path, then I need to find out why. And most of the time, it's just simply because of some niggly little thing that gets in the way or it you know, doesn't respond how I want it to when I press the certain key or something like that. And then by fixing that, you just progressively make that software a lot more polished. And I think that's the big difference between a great majority of open source products versus commercial products. With commercial products, usually, you know, there are obviously plenty of god-awful commercial products. But usually with commercial products, popular ones, they've gone through and they've found all those little burrs, those little inconveniences, and they've tried to eliminate them. Until, of course, the software becomes really popular and then they get bored and they decide, well, what can we do? And they go and change everything and then all the burrs come straight back up. Usually by hiding the things that you used to use that were very convenient, in obscure places. Uh, let's bury it three menu items down. Why not? Yep, sounds good to me. Let's change the whole menu system. We'll call it the ribbon system. Okay, three five three. Hi, Catherine. Welcome. Have you ever tried to use USB A to USB C converter? I haven't, Tony. No. I think uh, Harold was trying something, but there are complications. I think the problem comes from the fact that you've got to do the um, the PD stuff. So I think in the end, Harold's going to end up with what is essentially, you know, one of these. These basically are the USB-C versions, as it were. The only downside is, of course, you're not getting any USB uh, data activity indication, at least not as a simple blink. So it'll be interesting to see what Harold comes up with, but I have a feeling he's going to end up ultimately with something not too dissimilar to that. It is a little bit of an issue when you come to do developments on projects. I'm just going to actually so. Yeah, when you're doing development on projects like this, you have, say, the product that people really like. In this case, the chipmunk, then it works for USB-A. And then a new thing comes out, in this case, USB-C. And so people want what they liked about this moved to the new technology. But when you design for the new technology, you either find there are a lot of complications that are very difficult to get over, or the uh, cost factor starts blowing out. Um, I mean, these are already comparatively expensive. I mean, it's a boutique type item, you know, it's not a mass produced. So you are paying for the fact that it's effectively limited run developments. And when if Harold does produce something like this, it's going to cost quite a bit for him to recoup his costs, his real costs. Because remember, China can produce these pretty much, they will sell these retail at a price that is most times less than your bill of materials. So um, it's kind of scary how it happens. So when I was producing electronics in the past, I could say, you know, get something down to $3.65 for all the parts, and that's in like maybe 150, 200, maybe 1,000 quantities. And then you'd go on to somewhere like Banggood, 
and you'd see they'd be selling the same thing for two ninety five, and you, you just can't compete with that. So I have a feeling that most likely, even though Harold was probably going to try his damn best to produce a USB C chipmunk. I have a bad feeling that he's going to run into issues with the fact that he has to get you know special chipset for the power um, delivery and all that sort of stuff. And in the end, the project is going to lose the finesse that the original had. At least that's my theory. It's got nothing to do with the technical abilities or anything like that. It's just a case of sometimes when you've got to jump to a new technology development, it kind of ruins what was attractive about the original so it'll be interesting to see if he comes out with it that's great i'm going to get one but if he doesn't i'm not going to be surprised either hectic i used to used to design flight controllers for drones and had some hit boards so it's very hard to stay competitive yes uh, it is um yeah i mean all the stuff i used to do was also model aircraft I do occasionally get people requesting me to make a small run of the, some of the boards I used to do, and I've still got a box of 100 parts to make. But overall, I walked away from that market, and that's when I actually started coming back into IT and repairs and stuff like that. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Yes. Hey, Zentech. Yeah, I was very happy to get the call this morning, Catherine. Very happy, as you can imagine. All right. So this is the Flex, so we don't want to... Mix that up. Where is my proper pen for this? Ah. I'll just pen mark everything because it it's an overkill at times, but that one time it does save you, you're very thankful for that you did it. Okay, we will not be doing the ultrasonicing tonight. That will be for tomorrow, during the daytime. Ah, crikey, and I have run out of slots again. Ooh, wait, no, I've got a spare slot. Just had some other trash in there. Alright, time to get to the next machine. Another 1466 by the looks of it. Get another empty box. Ah. How are we going for time? 11.30. We may not get all the way through this one. Guess we'll see. Try to clean up my bench a little bit before getting started on the next. Oof, almost, almost doxed someone. Damn. Ah, oh, Josh, I've I've done my. Whoops, I've done my developments for the short term. Maybe I'll come up with something new at some point, but I don't know what. It's interesting that. Harold, the, the guy who does the chipmunk, a lot of what he does is the sort of thing that I was doing for the model aircraft scene. You know, you're making these little gadgets that just make life easier, that generally are not going to be taken up by the larger, you know, companies or larger runs. So you can just sort of squeeze yourself into a bit of a niche there. But I'm not sure what I would do if the opportunity came up. It probably wouldn't be anything to do with MacBooks, I can tell you that. It is certainly fun doing the design process. It's expensive though, definitely expensive. Even if you're only paying, say, $50 per iteration, the boards. I know you can get the boards cheaper than that, but yeah, you want to get them in a timely manner. You don't want to wait a month to get your boards. So let's call it 50 bucks for a 50 by 50 millimeter setup. You do that three or four times, and yeah, that's $200 already. And let's see, let's just see what this uh, 
Water was spilt on the top of the laptop and shortly after the screen faded. Ooh, okay, exciting. And I need to set the... There we go. Oh, Catherine, I have to wait. There's a lot of stuff that still has to precede the final purchase. Uh, we have to get all the conveyancy done. We have to have all the our uh, titles checked. And Paul has to pull the battery out. So, yeah, th there's a lot of stuff yet to come. If miracles upon miracles keep happening, then we may have it all settled before Christmas. Chances are, the universe being what it is in life, it probably won't happen until early next, um, you know, early New Year. But you never know. You know, it, it might just go all nice and smooth, but it's hard to say. Three, five, six. I mean, certainly it'd be a lovely Christmas present if it did happen. Hey, James Ewing. Just seeing if there's any... Okay, I can see straight away there's a bunch of damage over here. On the display connector. By the way, how's the tearing on the microscope tonight? I haven't seen anyone whinging about it. So it might be a good sign. Haven't seen any tearing. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it does seem to be pretty... Yeah, the only tearing I'm seeing is just the typical weird Z tear that um, Linux has with Intel chipsets. Yeah, that's that's a cluster. Amazing, the... Um, it is damaged, but it's... doesn't look destroyed. It's more just I got a little wet, I got a bit of corrosion on me. That's certainly no wonder it faded. <laughs> uh, Warren, I actually can't remember. I'll have to check. I had one of those um, uh, I forget the name now. Samson not Samsung but some other S Samosan or something like that brand name one. I generally didn't really like it. Yeah, surprisingly, that connector's alright. There's a little bit of a burning in there. But we can check the contacts there and make sure they're okay. But definitely that needs to be taken out. Hopefully it's a straightforward job. Because you know how sometimes you can start out with these jobs and you think oh yeah you know that's just a LVDS connector even though I haven't got the ones with the right keying on them I do very much miss having properly keyed connectors but good luck knowing if you're going to get those ones when you order them from AliExpress even if they do have a picture of the one with the key on it 90% of the time the one they send you is not So it's really the luck of the draw there. But yeah, often these sort of jobs, they start out thinking, yep, this should be good. I should get this out of the way in a couple of hours or an hour. And then you find that there's been a cascade effect and something else got taken out. Like I was genuinely expecting this cable to need replacing, which at least we can do now. After finally growing a spine and having a shot at it. That's another reason why I want to get my hands on some of these new M1 MacBooks is because I am sick to death of waiting for a client to bring in a machine that I want to learn about in a way that they don't mind if it gets destroyed. You know, so like they're like, well look, honestly I don't care if you can get to work, you can get to work. If you can't, you can't. 
it's rare to get that scenario happening and I'm tired of having to wait 12 24 months before that comes up I want to be able to get to the point where I can go out buy these products new like you know 1500 bucks or whatever disassemble it learn how it works use it as a tax write-off you know um, and then be right there or ready to go because for too long it's I've been having to wait simply because of the circumstances I mean, I only just started doing iPhone 10, um, 10R, 10S, like three, two, three months ago. Yeah, and that's way too long. Think of all the sales I missed out on because I didn't get onto that earlier. Yeah. Amazingly, it seems quite clear around here, so I'm not sure how the liquid came through in itself becomes an interesting question. Six. Yeah, it's frustrating not being able to keep up because of the fact that you know, you can't make that investment. So I'm glad I'm getting to the position where I can turn that around. Yeah, the adage that you um, it's expensive being poor is actually very apt. Yeah, when you think about it, if you do not have enough money, you can't take advantage of sales that come up, like 50% off or whatever. You can't stock up on things you can't capitalize on opportunities and a lot of the time you fall afoul of um, penalties deadlines and things like that so you spend probably a greater portion of your income dealing with the fact that you don't have an income or enough income and yeah, you can see how it just spirals out of control and it's very hard to get out of that pit now i'm not saying that you know it should be sympathy cases or anything like that i'm just saying that it can be to get out of that pit you really got to apply yourself a hell of a lot more than once you are out of it it's taken me well the better part of a decade more than a decade to finally get back to what I consider where I should have been 15 years ago. Yeah, you have one stuff up, health or otherwise, and um, yeah, it's it can very much destroy your career for a very long time. Particularly if you are a sole trader. Yeah, I never defaulted on things. I always paid all my debts and things like that. But it gets difficult. Yeah, you. You become a professional juggler, that's for sure. And we never, we never took any um, support, as in from the government or anything. It was always everything was off my own back. Not that even if I tried, if I tried to apply, they'd say, they'd find a reason why I couldn't have any kind of support. Probably the only real support I ever got was a couple of free sessions with the um, make yourself feel better by talking to somebody type thing. And well, that only lasts for a day or two and then, sorry, back to reality for you. Yeah, AJ, credit cards are very painful like that. Yeah, a lot of people sort of, when you say that you end up incurring credit card debt, you know, a lot of people think that you went out and splurged on big screen TV and all that sort of stuff. Most of the time, 
well I know for myself that was certainly not the case it was more like food and then juggling bills trying to worm my way out of this horrible situation all because I had the audacity to actually fall ill but here we are we're sort of seems like at this point we're finally out of the pit Ach man, come on. Wacht it. Lifted pads, eh, I don't know, no, I can't see any lifted pad, that's just a blob. Now I wish, I wish I could say to people who are in that situation still, I wish I could tell you that all you have to do is go to some place and say the magic words and yeah, they'll understand your situation and they will give you a hand and lift you out. The sad reality is that it's a load of, ba load of baloney that is not going to happen. Okay, maybe I shouldn't quite say it that assertively, but it sure as hell felt like it. Um, time and time again, I found that most, well, I should rephrase this, most of the time that I've found, if you go to somewhere like a bank or government department or whatever and declare your situation, chances are you're going to end up worse than what you were before you went there. Yeah, Warren, that, uh, you know, even a year ago, things were much better than... Uh, five, six years ago, things were really rough. In fact, eight years ago... Uh, I'm trying to think now. How old am I now? It's 47, I think. Something like that. My mid to late 30s were the worst. So, yeah, 10 years ago, let's say. 10, 12 years ago. No, there, there was a blob there, Christian. That's what was making you look like. Oh, wait. What? Someone's querying about my Afrikaans. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I gotta... You will get the occasional drop of swearing in Afrikaans. Uh, Jesus, we have changed to a new board, that's why. That board we have already now fixed. Okay, well they're pretty much gone, but that's not a problem because they both come from this section here, so we'll just put a new connector in and run some wire. No, I can't sing. Sorry. <laughs> right, new connector. Yeah, Catherine, you've got a, um, a debit card, which I think is actually really good. Yeah, it's very handy to have the features of a credit card in the sense of using it for sa yeah, purchasing things online etc but without the risk Yeah, Josh, <laughs> that, that's certainly not a... That was, funnily enough, how things started to spiral out of control. I did have 
I was earning a lot of money when I first got back from overseas and I was doing my email filtering software. Well, this is software I was selling for about $3,000 a seat and I was selling a lot of it. Um, in Australia here, like National Bank, uh, Virgin Airlines, people like you know, uh, Pamelut, uh, Dairy, all that sort of stuff, they would be buying it. So I was doing very well. But I couldn't sustain that. And in the end, what the, the first hiccup was, was when I decided to close that down because I couldn't really sustain it. But the tax department was basing how much tax I had to pay on my previous year's income. So like, say you have a 100,000 income last year, that means you're probably going to be paying like around about 25,000, 30,000 personal tax. And so for every quarter for the new year, they're going to charge you, uh, let's say, well, a quarter of that 25,000, so seven and a half, seven, 7,250, plus a bit of a percentage for um, inflation. But if you're not earning that money, you can't pay that money. And at the time that this was happening, there was no way to negotiate with the tax department that you couldn't pay that. You had to pay it, and then at the end of the financial year, you could say, I actually couldn't afford that. Um, I didn't earn that, so I need that money back. And that's like, yeah, sure, here's your money back. The trouble is, you've already been ruined, and you're already paying interest on ta uh, credit cards and all that sort of stuff. And that's how, that was the first hiccup. So if you have a good year followed by a bad year, that's a very bad thing. Particularly if you're only just starting and you haven't had a chance to build yourself a suitable buffer to fall back on. Like if you already had, you know, 50,000 spare sitting in the closet, then that wouldn't have been a problem. You'd be able to ride through that. But when you don't have that, because I had just come back from overseas and so there was a lot of expenses that got used up. So if you don't have that, to put it bluntly, you're screwed. Fortunately, they realized that that was happening and now you can actually um, negotiate your term. You can sort of go, look, this quarter was a hopeless quarter. I haven't earned that. I need to make an adjustment. And you pay, you, know, you, you state your case and they will adjust it. And because the fact that this policy was basically destroying people including myself. Anyway, like I said, that was the first step. There were a few other steps involved. I might have been able to recover from that first one, but the things afterwards, probably not so much. Okay, yep, this is a really horrible tack down, but that's intentional. Uh, Jesus, I haven't got to that point yet. I want to do this first, and then I will test to see if the cable flex, or not flex, but the cable to the LCD is okay or not. The first thing we're going to do is fix this. Okay, again, it looks really shonky, I know, but it's not how it's going to be staying. Well, Barry, it used to be pre-calculated and that was it. But now you can, when you put in your quarterly um, financials, you can then state, look, your financials, your business activity statement, is the indicator that you haven't or you have earned the amount of money that they think you have anyway so yeah like i said it was a, a major problem it caught me i know it caught my own family out too much i'm pretty sure my father suffered the same when he was running his business which would make you think that i would be aware of it but the trouble is a lot of the time these things sneak up on you when you're busy doing so many other things and if your job is not to be the accountant, even though you are the one that's doing all the work, the days just slip past and then before you know it, you're in trouble. Ah, just like then. And then, ah, this is terrible. These will all be reflowed once I'm done with the pins.
I enjoy being a solo trader, but it certainly has its, you know, no matter which type of style of business you run, there are pros and cons. And those pros and cons, yeah, it's up to you as an individual to decide whether you like that set or you don't. Just the same as we choose our partners based on their pros and cons. No, not the wrong tip or anything like that. It's just a case of I do it differently. People like are horrified of what? You can't do things differently. Not allowed. Okay, what we do is we come back with the hot air and we get a assistive heating. Just warm things up. A nice little reflow. There's too much for solder on that anyway. Doing things differently doesn't mean it's wrong. Like Elon Musk landing first stages. You can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. No one does that. Let those suckers burn up in re-entry. Are you an idiot? Why do you want to waste all that fuel just to bring a first stage back? You moron. Space Karen, is that what you guys are calling them? That's that's harsh. Don't you mean Space COVID now? Elon, like most very successful people in that sort of area, of course, is not going to have the uh, social graces or niceties that we like. But that is how they get to where they are. You know, it's... So why do we end up with all these sociopaths or psychopaths as prime minister or president? It's because that's the sort of personality you have to have to get to that point. You can't be... It'd be nice if you could be nice and get to those places, but you can't. There is a certain degree of emotional disconnect that you need to make it and survive amongst all the backstabbing swamp dwellers. That's how they got to the Marcel's. What? What was that? Yeah, Barry, I mean... Yeah, I mean, sure, they... And, you yeah, know, push come to shove, they can always decide, well, we are going to ditch this one. But uh, it's pretty good how they're actually getting around it. And I like the fact that, yeah, they made the improvements. Like, okay, let's, um, let's f cool the fuel down even more so we can increase the density, you know, the uh, effective energy in the tank. You know, things like that. They became a quite, a, quite a disruptor, which will become the normal. I mean, even, uh, what was it, is it Electron launching out of New Zealand? When they first started up, they were like, we're going to be cheap and we're just going to dispose of the rocket. Our feature is the fact that we're not going to try and recycle, we're just going to be so cheap we don't need to recycle. But even now, they're sort of going, well, let's try and recycle. Oh, right, the bloody French Revolution. YouTube better not demonetize me for saying that because it is, that was a literal sense. I've already been having enough drama with YouTube demonetizing things lately. I think too many SMC replacements resulted in me saying words that YouTube misconstrues. And so the next day I see this stream has been partially demonetized and the worst thing is that of course the first sort of 24 hours of any particular stream is usually your most profitable in terms of adverts but YouTube denies you that by doing the cute little demonetize or partial demonetization 
So I have to not do SMC reworks anymore. Yeah, having the electronics, the guidance systems, the yeah, the control systems, I certainly think that there's probably been a lot of work done on the hydraulics, the propulsion, everything like that to make sure it reacts appropriately to the whole system really. It's just impressive. I don't know where my um, don't care what people say attitude tend to come from originally. I, I know there's a few instances in my childhood that I can remember where people would tell me, you know, you can't, you're not doing it the right way, you can't do it that way, and I'd be like, well, quite frankly, I want to at least try it, so I'm going to ignore you. And I think I encountered enough events of that where I ended up succeeding with the way that I was trying, or at least well enough, that I decided, yeah, you know, I'm the one that's got to, I'm the one that's paying for it, I'm the one that's going to live with it, I'm the one that's going to profit from it, yeah, it's all on me. So even if someone else says I'm doing it wrong, as long as I'm willing to take the risk of the loss, then why shouldn't I try it? I do remember one time where I was absolutely blatantly wrong and proven wrong. That was, um, that was probably the last time I remember that. I was a kid, I think I would have been four years old, and I decided at that point, actually I now think of it two times, um, I decided at that point that if you wrap alfoil on a toilet roll, put a cone on the top of it, and then light a match on the underside, it would be a rocket and launch. My mother was very adamant that that would not be the case. And I was like, no, really, it really will work. Four years old, come on, give me a break. Needs to say, she let me have the opportunity, well, she lit the rocket, and it just burned up. No rocket launches. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was wrong there. The other time that I was wrong, I think I was six years old, I had built a aeroplane out of Lego I was a big Lego kid and I had a prop on it and it had the electric motor and I was spinning it and it was moving forward and I was like look I'm making the plane move forward using the prop and funnily enough my mother again said it's not because of the what you built there on the prop it's just because of the vibration that it's moving forward so, uh, yeah, and that was about the last time. After that, I think I pretty much decided, well, I'll just find these things out myself anyway. I do remember the first time where I was adamant about something and I was right about it. That wasn't quite the same scenario. Um, and that was funny enough with aquariums. It's, um, you know, I was interested in fish and my sister had bought a fish tank or something like that. And I decided I wanted to have it. She got bored of it. And I wanted to spend some more money on it. And I remember my family or my parents saying that, like, no, no, you won't like it. You know, don't, don't bother with it. And it turned out to be a very substantial passion of my life to, you know, keep aquariums. So in that instance, that was a, yeah, I was like, there, see, told you I'd like it. <laughs> but SMCs, you'll have to call them solder biblets, you yeah, know, something like that, eh? But uh, at the end of the day, it's nice to get... It's nice to get people to give you an affirmation like when you say, you know, I want to do this, and people, it's nice to have people say, you know, that's a really good idea. I think you should try that. At the end of the day, just do it. You know, whether you're going to be right or wrong, it doesn't really matter. If you're right, then you get to claim the glory entirely for yourself. If you're wrong, then you get no one but yourself to blame.
as far as I can see, that's a pretty good gun. Hey, Greg M's here. How's it going, Greg? Yeah, Blue Dog Ron, that's right. Yeah, best to learn by your own, um, own suffering or your own success. Yeah, we're getting a bit philosophical tonight, aren't we? Alright, so that's um, rigged up nicely. I kind of, I'm very happy, even though it is crossed over there, that was a bit of a boo-boo, but I'm happy otherwise. That pin there, I'm not 100% sure about. Yeah, that one there, I think that's a guard pin anyway. I'm pretty sure pin 2 is a guard pin. People are like, what the hell's a guard pin? So, what is this? Oh, this is a 165 as well. Okay, yeah, pin 1's ground, pin 2 is not connected. So we, I call it a guard pin, and likewise pin 5 is not connected. So you've got these two pins here where the backlight goes, and then you've got two pins that don't do anything, they're disconnected. And we call them guard pins, or yeah, guard connections. Just basically a barrier to whatever else is going on around. Something that perhaps they could have kept when they moved to the new MacBooks and try and stop that 50 volt uh, damage. They do have it on the new MacBook, do they? When you say new, new, which ones? Uh, I'm a little concerned about this chap here. I mean, it's not the worst, but I will admit it is, you know, triggering me a little bit. Oh, that flux is getting gnarly. Let's see if this moves or not. Okay, that doesn't move, so I'm going to now try and solder it up a little bit, see if the end cap on the part tins up nicely. Sam, thank you. Thank you very much for the 229 euro. Right. Oh, thanks, Crazy J. Geez. Yeah, you had me thinking there because I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't taken the time to really look at the new, new ones. So I thought maybe you were talking about the you know, 2020 releases. I'll tell you what is fun about the home loan, but this is something all of you will probably know about, is that my minimum monthly repayments for it, with the land rates that we have to pay being in the town, is less than what I pay rent. But I mean, you already know that. Most Everybody really knows that. But the trouble is the banks will just... For them, it's the liability risk aspect, or the risk of like, well, this person could just disappear and we're going to have to hand off our stuff to a real estate and we're not going to get our money back fully and things like that. It's an inconvenience. And the bank doesn't want to have to be a real estate agent. That's the whole thing. But it is exceptionally frustrating when you know that your repayments are going to be substantially less than rent. That you still get given that huge runaround. Now I know you have to show that you can you know, maintain, service the loan. But if you're doing something like a 20-30% down or 20% down, the bank really shouldn't have anything to care about because most of the time you end up buying a house for probably less than what it is actually technically worth um, and then if you put the 20% down the bank usually can flip that house pretty damn quick I've heard the Macos Big Sur Bricks Old yeah I've heard that I've seen a couple of reports but I guess we'll wait and see I've got no compelling reason to upgrade to Big Sur as yet no sir -y. or should I say no sir for me we're just having a look around seeing if there's anything else that we missed
Yeah, there's random bits of dust and stuff, but it's nothing too bad. Hey, Steve K. But it's certainly frustrating, and again, it's a it's that case of what I was talking about before, where being poor is um, not being rich is very expensive. That's what I was trying to say. Because if you're wealthy enough to then just pick up a home loan, then you'd acquire an asset, you'd be paying that asset off, so your money would actually be building up for you effectively. It'd be costing you less because you're not paying rent. And you know, it'd be a, a forward advantage for you, you'd be progressively getting better. But first you've got to get to the point where you already are well off enough to prove that you deserve to be well off enough. Now I don't know if there's any real solution to this other than people taking more risk, like banks, investors and things like that. Uh, uh, I guess the one way around it, and I know this is unpopular because it's socialism, is for governments to offer some kind of loan. but when you've gone and you've um, gone free market on the banking industry and things like that then it's very much frowned upon to have the government offering such services although I would counter debate to say that since the banks are not providing that service at that level or I should say at that risk level then should the banks even be complaining and then the counter to that is that why should the public take that, incur that risk. So, you know, it's, um, there are a lot of pros and cons. There's a lot of debate, which one, depending on where you sit, depending on your perspective or how you, um, as I say, what the optics are on it. But I do feel generally that there are a lot of people who could be perfectly good repayment on the home loan, but have been denied the opportunity which is actually ultimately putting a greater strain on our welfare as it is anyway. Greg M, M1 reviews are out. Oh, okay, I'll have to start looking at them. What's it? Bikes, cars and guns? What's that? You paid your house off in January and now you have to rent it off the government forever. You mean like land tax rates, things like that? A bit like how when Lewis talks about um, yeah, you buy a house in what is it, New Jersey or somewhere like that, and you still end up paying about twenty or thirty thousand a year just to own the place because of the tax rates or what was what was he calling them? Uh, was it land tax? For me, after I own the place, then my minimum really works out to around about $50 a week. So two and a half, probably about three and a half thousand by the time I've paid off. So three and a half thousand over a year is not too bad. Right, better check this connector to make sure we don't have a short there. What I'll do is I'm not going to power it up, but I will plug it in because it does make it substantially easier, which reminds me I need to wash the flux out of that. Damn it. I feel like I ingested some dust in my lungs. I hate that feeling. This is just 250, it's not hot. I think the next big upheaval when it comes to tax is going to be when we have to transition away from petrol excise being the primary or a big source of income for the government once electric vehicles become more dominant. Because, <coughs> I mean, realistically, you know, petrol excise, they say it's for maintaining the roads and things like that, but you know that in the budget, 
a lot of other hands are in that uh, in that pie, taking money that isn't really actually for the roads. So petrol excise pays for a hell of a lot more than just the roads. And when that dwindles, as electric vehicles come about more, they're going to say, well, you know, we have to maintain the roads, but they're also going to be thinking, well, actually, we need to maintain the gravy trough. So um, it's going to be interesting. A lot of people are not going to like the sensation of having to pay per kilometre or report their kilometres in order to be taxed proportionately. There may be some compromises. Maybe they'll say, oh, look, we'll tell you what, we'll just... Um, say maybe do blocks so up to 10,000 you don't pay any tax or you pay very minimal tax 10,000 to 100,000 you pay this plus this that uh, I don't know how they're going to do it I suppose they could say well we can tax on the electricity but then you'll have to have a proper plug that is um, on a certain tariff that is strictly for electric vehicles but that's where it's going to get ugly too because what they'll say is well people could actually bypass that and plug it into their home and charge it like you know um uh what is it 2.4 kilowatt uh just out of their wall plug so we've got to prevent that kind of misuse so what they'll do is they'll put a tax on household electricity kind of like how rear ended up putting tax on any CDs, um, any blank CDs, because there was the chance that you were actually cheating Rear out of their uh, sales by copying illegal music to the CDs. Even if you were buying those CDs for strictly data purposes, you were paying a tax to Rear for the fact that they were worried someone else was going to be copying music. So see, that's probably going to what will be happening to domestic supply power. Hey Ray, three one four, does that make you Ray Pie? Hey Ollie, automatic reporting per charge meter and built into the car. You see, Adrian, that's where I think that people will probably have a bit of a. They'll lose their nut over the fact that, no, you can't tell what we're doing. You're not allowed to. Meanwhile, they're on Facebook telling everyone what they're doing. It's one of those weird things where people don't want to be tracked. They don't want to give away personal information, even though they already are giving it away in another area even more openly. It's a bit like when Australia tried to bring in the identity card and everyone was like, no way, get stuffed, F off, mate. Meanwhile, we've all got Medicare card, we've all got driver's licenses, we've all got tax accounts. So we already, for all intents and purposes, had that happening. But because all of a sudden it was going to be on a card, and we called it a national register or whatever, phew, not having that. How many litres in a gallon? Uh, depends which gallon you're talking about, but roughly four. You get about, um, in a litre of petrol, you'll get anything between 50 and fifty and 70 kilometres of range on an EV, say like a Tesla 3. It's usually, I think, 8 kilometres a kilowatt hour is roughly what they get now. And there is about 8.9 kilowatt hour of power in a litre of petrol. So yeah, you can work it all out from that. I don't know why I'm putting the fan in there. I don't really need it. I'm just going to chest, chest test the backlight. We've already checked it for a short that doesn't appear to be a short. <laughs> Famous words, Paul. Doesn't appear to be a short. Mm, plugs it in. <laughs> it appears there was a short that we didn't see. All right. We're getting a little unrealistic here. Now, I wouldn't mind having an electric bike. At this point, I can't justify it on the basis of the fact that I barely use my car as it is. Like, I think when it came to claiming kilometres this year, I could only find about 1,050 kilometres that I'd travelled this year 
or financial year for tax purposes. It's like, you know, I may as well, the car costs me $900 a year in, um, in registration, so I may as well just use it. Spending another $1,000 for an electric bike really doesn't get me any headway. You know, I'm basically spending more, and I'm not really gaining anything because I don't travel enough kilometers for that fuel to matter. All right, let's let's go. Well, parents, right? Screen hasn't yet energized. Energized. Energize. And okay, that looks good. I don't know why, but whenever I hear the word energize, my brain torturously takes me back to Star Wars. I think it was, um, I think it was the second horrible movie with um, Padme and do a barrel roll, that, that series. And the, um, one of the ships is shot out of the sky and the robots at the terminal trying to land the thing, they're like, you know, energize. And I know it's stuck in my head and I can never get rid of it and it's really frustrating because I really am not a fan. <laughs> Something like magnetic energize. Crash landed the damn thing anyway. No, it wasn't Star Trek, I wish. No, Star Wars. Damn um, clones, the robotic voice. Those movies were just so, so cringeworthy. Enhance, oh geez, you know, that's, um, what is that, CSI? <laughs> Another word that sticks in my head from a movie is comply. Uh, let's see. I wonder how many people can think of which, which comply, uh, of what movie I got stuck with that word, comply, comply. Give you guys a couple of minutes. See who can think of anything. Yeah, that dust definitely got into my throat. I can feel it. Damn, I hate that. May build a small two person helicopter. Huh? Yeah. I'm not sure I'd be confident in flying a helicopter. Because I know as a fact that those things basically defy the universe to not just, you know, they just... Helicopters are perpetually falling apart. Flew them enough as with model aircraft and stuff like that to know that they just will tear themselves apart given the first opportunity. No, not resistance futile, not judge dread. No, no, no. I can see, um, yeah, I, I know the comply you're talking about there. Funnily enough, no. The one that it is for me is actually in the movie Equilibrium with Christian Bale. They break into his house where, where his wife is. Because she's, she's guilty of a sense violation. Oh, that's right, yeah. Christian Bale wasn't there and he broke the arm of the guy coming in, or the group coming in. So this is a lawful arrest. Your wife's a sense offender. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Equilibrium was a very good movie. It um, did, you know, it was a bit of a groundbreaker in some ways, particularly with the um, whole Gun Carter fighting style. And, yeah, just the styling of it. But it also led to a really god-awful movie because someone decided, hey, I like that movie. Um, here's a couple of million dollars. Go out and make another movie for me. And they called that uh, Ultraviolet. And it was ultra-terrible. And the reason why it was ultra-terrible because if you had seen Equilibrium and then you watch Ultraviolet, it's like all they did is they did all the same things again but just with more people and uh, more effects. And so it was like, uh, eh, it was a waste of time. Sometimes giving people more money after they've proven that they've got talent is the worst thing in the world to do for them. 
Sometimes you have to keep people starved. Alright, so that is fixed. It was basically just the connector needing to clean up and the other trace repair. Which is good, and we're only 20 past midnight. So now I've got time to go clear out my chest. Uh, this is really actually knocking me because my brain knows the crap that is on these boards, and I breathed in a bit of that. And um, so now my anxiety is like twisting up my chest, making it worse than it really is, perhaps. And it's compounded by the fact that a few years ago, I was just moving some laundry. Yeah, I know. Bad mistake being in the laundry in the first place. So was, I shouldn't have been there. And I was moving laundry and I put the laundry basket down. And there must have been some like fluff or something like that in amongst it. And that fluff just drifted up and I breathed it in and it went right away in. And I couldn't breathe. I just, everything just went seized up. I was, well, I could, but I was coughing, I was spluttering, and I was coughing to the point where you basically were trying to cough your own lungs out, and it started bleeding, you know, just like coughing up blood and everything from that. Uh, that was really traumatic. So whenever I now I get something sucked into my lungs, it causes a bit of a um, relapse of that uh, paranoia. Obviously, I lived, but I do wonder what sort of scarring I did to myself on that fateful morning. Yeah, not good. Snake's still outside? No, um, it's long since moved on. <coughs> Let's see. Christian, um, I'm guessing you're talking about ultraviolet being the worst on the worst 10, because yeah, I would agree that is where it belongs. Conversely, um, equilibrium should be on one of the high lists. Yeah, well, it wasn't so much a gag reflex, it was a, um irritant reflex in the lungs. You know, when you suck in something, your lungs want to expel it. But the trouble is it couldn't expel it, it just stayed in there. I don't know, maybe I get a chest x-ray and there might just still be that little piece of lint, maybe a name tag in my lungs or something. But, you know, it wasn't nice, and anyway, so this is um, why I'm choking up a bit now. I've learned that removing the battery in 1502 and there's a pain in the backside. Well, if you get one of these, it's really easy. I gotta say, this is actually easier than the string method in most cases. I still use the string method for certain circumstances, but with a fresh one of these and a little bit of a uh, dipping of um, alcohol, these will cut through no problem. <laughs> Not through the battery, but through the adhesive. If you don't have the battery out within two minutes of one of these, then maybe you shouldn't be repairing MacBooks anymore. <laughs> anyway, no, just kidding. But the, these are very good for getting the batteries out. So if you haven't got one of these, get some. Time to sit back and get toasty. That would actually be nice, yeah. Maybe wearing a mask. Nah, it's, it doesn't... I don't get the anxiety while working on it. It's only if something kicks up and I do draw it in. While working on it, I don't have like a um, preemptive anxiety, so that's no problem. Joshua Bell, I had the same issue with diatomous earth treating my house. Oh, yeah, that stuff is nasty. Yeah, because when you look at that stuff under the microscope, it's all those jaggedy old little creatures that have um, all the bone structures of them. So it's a bit like sucking in um, volcanic dust. So, yeah, my full sympathy is there. That would scar your lungs big time. Please do cut through the battery. I don't think so. Mind you, these days, most of the time when you cut through batteries or anything, they just smolder a little bit. That's it. The, if you want to get a lithium pack to ignite properly, what you need to do is hook it up to a power supply and just pump power into it until it puffs up. And once it's puffed up from you pumping power into it, then you can um, either you know, rupture it or just let it go its own natural way. Most of the time when you get packs in that have ballooned up and that you have to remove them, that ballooning is different from when they've been overcharged ballooning. That ballooning is just the degenerative gas um, generated you know, by the failing cells. Um, it's not the same gas really as... Well, it's not the same volatility as if you've overcharged or pushed the cell too far. 
So with the ones that come in and they're old and they're puffed up, you can usually puncture them and they generally don't ignite. But if you overcharge the pack and it's puffing up, yeah, then you're going to get your fireworks. Perlite has cancer warnings. Oh, joy, yeah. yeah. Vacuum them first. Well, normally I do, you know, you often see I bring out this brush and brush them down and usually the extractor picks it up this time it just didn't it was just the perfect combination of position and yeah it's like sitting right about there now uh, got the sensation it's actually down here but it's up there yeah if they balloon on their own they're pretty much because they've, been, they've gone below the threshold voltage and they just you know out gas like that um but if you're charging them and they balloon then you're in trouble yeah explosion pie containment dish uh, usually what we would do is we would keep the batteries in a steel container or better off a um, terracotta you know, ceramic container, a thick one and then on the lid on the underside there would be a plastic membrane and we would have sand inside that plastic so it would be like a, a dome if you lift the lid, it's fairly heavy a dome of sand so what would happen is if one of the batteries did happen to rupture they would melt the plastic, the sand would fall down and it wouldn't put the fire out per se, but it would contain the um, the jetting of the flames until it would naturally just burn itself out. Because you can't really put lithium pack fires out too much because they they tend to liberate their own oxygen, so they you know, they are their own chain reaction. All you can really do is sustain it, keep things cool until it's burned itself out. Having a heck of a time trying to find someone locally dispose of batteries. No one wants to take lithium. That's um, lithium iron. I would expect people would take lithium polymer. I understand is a little bit more troublesome. Yeah. When I went to Vegas, they were using a saw auto rifle for target practice of batteries. Oh, yeah. All right, I am um, out of here. Yeah, uh, Lewis's bike is a pretty good example of things out of control. I'd say the uh, the charge controller botched up and um, yeah not good you definitely have to be careful with charge controllers fortunately these days most of the lithium pack charge controllers are very well done but they do often still push them a little far or you know, take corners most often I'd probably say it's bad wiring or bad soldering a bit like with my heat pad that decided one day it was going to become go supernova on me and try to destroy a board that I was drawing that just turned out to be a bit of shonky soldering so yeah can you suggest any electric screwdrivers no i can't i don't use them i don't like to use them on this sort of stuff i will use them for you know household type things and i use makita ones i know milwaukee is a very favorite brand for a lot of people but i still use makita disney car is the best left them fire i've seen i haven't seen that one i'll have to have a look at that uh, yeah, I'd say you didn't get the same sunk cells you paid for. Definitely, I agree there. So, Okay, I am out of here. Thank you very much for watching. We got lucky tonight. We had two successes. There is another machine for me to do, but that is a data recovery job, so I won't be doing that on live stream. I'm sorry. It's sometimes i just got to focus on the task. Uh, there may be deliveries tomorrow, so we might have something interesting. Anyway, in the meantime, you all take care. Thank you for being here, and I will see you next time. I'll catch you later.